Uh, hi everyone, so uh, before I turn in for the night, I just wanted to make a video and because uh, I actually have been coming across this particular uh, phenomenon and I probably didn't tell everyone that uh, while in the process of actually uh, recovering from narcissistic abuse and healing, uh, I, I think I probably have told you about it, that there was a quite a number of incidences where I experience um, not really not it's not really like sleep paralysis but but cases where uh, I felt as in my my dream state was being um, plagued by some darker presence and and yeah darker presence and there was a feeling that some particular force, some presence of force was trying to oppress me very badly and, and I believe I've actually told you about some of the dreams I had and um, some of these dreams don't seem very particularly they're not very comforting dreams and, and I mean we know that, that, that when we have a lot of stress that sometimes it's actually definitely is linked to stress sometimes but a lot of times actually but some things cannot always be explained just by using uh, psychology, psychiatry, or science. I mean, the, the scientific method of explaining everything or trying to think that everything can be explained just by science and neurology alone uh, is actually very incomplete. So uh, I wanted to actually address another thing that was actually uh, in... That, that kind of surfaced in the course of conversations with friends and other people and uh, while also watching videos and, and, and doing research about this. I don't pretend to be an expert on on this subject matter, but I, I want to actually talk a little bit more about the phenomenon of sleep paralysis. Okay, sleep paralysis. Yeah, uh, I have not experienced sleep paralysis before, thankfully. Uh, but based on what I have heard from other people, um, based on the demographics and of the people that I talk to who had it, uh, okay, sleep paralysis actually. Uh, as we know, uh, it's this kind of phenomenon where you know, like you while you're sleeping, you feel as if, uh, yeah, it's strange because you know we know that when we are sleeping, our brain enters uh, into these different phases of sleep. Uh, one of them being REM sleep. So it's REM meaning rapid eye movement. Uh, okay, the medical explanation for sleep paralysis is that uh, just when you actually experience it you are almost at the brink of actually entering REM but your body is not able to actually do so and um, there are certain things that happen which are very particular to sleep paralysis uh, such as uh, you know the muscles tensing up in your body uh, it feels almost as if you are in undergoing some kind of spasm uh, and a lot of people going through it actually couldn't they, they can't move it's strange yeah but I mean it's like um, you're asleep, you're asleep, but it feels as if your body or your mind's eye or your spirit man inside uh, is aware that you cannot move your body. And and, and, and there is a sense that, uh, okay, in, in my culture, in Chinese culture, um, there's this belief in this uh, phenomenon. I mean, it's sleep paralysis. It's often likened to the presence of a uh, ghost or spirit that is pressing down on your body such that you can't move okay so they call this in uh, Chinese Gui Ya Shen okay means the ghost pressing down on the body okay uh, I am not very familiar with what the cause of it is um, from that perspective what I mean they, they, I mean Chinese have used a particular uh, shamanistic way of explaining that in superstition uh, but uh, based on my experience with sleep paralysis it's actually a very uh, alarming thing for those who have been through it uh, most of them can't even vocalize, vocalize that thing and uh, alongside the you know the spasms and the paralysis that stops the body from moving uh, some of them have actually repeat, reported seeing a demon or something that looks very shadowy and dark uh, yeah, to the point that it feels almost or looks almost like a demon. So uh, regardless of the you know the religion or your faith tradition or your 
beliefs, I think that is a cause for actually um, to watch out for. I personally believe that while there are certain physical or medical reasons, like including neurology, to actually explain sleep paralysis, uh, it doesn't fully explain what's going on. Okay, I have had a friend who told me once about his experience. Um, okay, this one friend who's actually uh, formerly in a charismatic church, uh, which he hasn't been attending, uh, which uh, I, I associate with the Word of Faith movement. Okay, and the Word of Faith movement basically claims that you name it, you can claim it. So let's say if I name that I will be healed of this disease or this illness. I'll recover because I claim it and I name it. Yeah, because I name it and claim it. And uh, some people still even go as far as saying that, you know, you can command your surroundings and the way your life is by naming and claiming it. Uh, it is largely positive thinking and, and, and it's not very Christian from my point of view. Uh, in fact, uh, regardless of whether you call yourself like a Protestant, Evangelical, Catholic or whatever, any kind of association with this movement, uh, which is predominantly in uh, evangelical Christianity, it is heretical and you need to avoid it because uh, based on what I realized, uh, you know that friend told me that uh, when he was in that dream, uh, that, that state, he saw a particular, I mean the state of sleep paralysis, he saw that dark presence there. It was like looming up like a spirit or a demon. And then, while it happened, um, he suddenly just, he's told me that in a dream, he suddenly, suddenly, suddenly just broke out speaking in tongues. Uh, okay, uh, I don't really, I know I came from a, a tongue speaking church in my youth, but uh, I left the charismatic church a long, long time ago. Uh, and uh, after, you know, like studying the Bible and looking at what's going on, uh, I'm very convinced that a lot of it doesn't come from God. Uh, there is... A very I do not want to offend anyone, but uh, based on my observation, this spirit that is going on in charismatic churches could potentially be a demonic spirit, or because you know that even the devil can create miracles and signs and wonders that would deceive people. And I mean, it's written in the Bible in uh, you know First Peter that even the um, Satan can appear as an angel of light. So what more do we need to do? Uh, we have to just watch out because you never know if that so-called revelation or that, that particular, you know, experience that you had is actually simply emotionalism. And the problem is when he broke up, he told me that when he broke up speaking in tongues and um, you know that thing is this, if you are, I don't judge people, but the thing is if you are consciously living a, a lifestyle which opens you up to certain things such as, uh, for example, that friend was very heavily involved in things like astrology uh, and the uh, New Age movement and he claims that Christians who uh, judge the new age movement is like they're actually really um, judgmental and, and they don't know why they are very messed up and whatever but uh, okay from a personal point of view I don't really want to condemn anyone who's in it uh, and I mean the new age mo movement always talks about light and love light and love but I mean to be honest there are, there's a certain moment in my life when I was actually um, you know I was doing uh, tarot reading and while doing tarot reading, I, I felt that there was a, I, I, while I wouldn't call it a demonic presence or spirit, uh, yet at the same time, I kind of found that it was like I was seeking some kind of uh, affirmation or some kind of uh, hope in something outside of God. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is that as, a, as someone who is a professing Christian, why do I actually turn to something outside of my faith? And, and it was like, okay, I, I kind of realized at one point in time I told my friends I had way of uh, uh, me rationalizing it I said oh you know I was actually uh, yeah I, I, the way I rationalized it was really just this it was like you know like psychology some psychologists not all uh, used like, all these archetypes like which I always found in tarot cards to rationalize everything and you know including the subconscious but the point is this uh, if, why are you relying on chance and the thing is that the fact that you, I was actually turning to these cards, uh, this ex, you know, that's the, the sources outside, which do not really give me a very objective truth or a standard for me to live my life, uh, instead of my own faith and my own, um, yeah, my own encounters with God, like my not just personal but even objective in terms of reading the Bible. 
the church fathers and my own spiritual experiences and I mean instead of doing that I mean why do I turn to some something else and the the problem with the cards okay uh that 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 can be rationalized with regards to a particular uh, logical fallacy that I think I was actually getting into as well um, there's something called the Barnum effect B-A-R-N-U-M effect okay the Barnum effect is very different from the placebo effect okay the placebo effect is that because we believe something happens is that way it will happen uh, but the Barnum effect is a little bit similar but also a bit different is um, okay it goes into the sense that uh, it was obviously created by someone with the last name of Barnum but uh, it's like this because uh, we we tend to look out for something, uh, people believe in what we believe in. Uh, we we go out to look look for it. So uh, it's it's that kind of thing that when we when we have uh, let's say you know the cards tell you that uh, you're gonna like meet someone today today or that uh, you're gonna actually have a certain um, kind of experience that would not be good for you. You you end up priming yourself into that particular pattern. And it becomes a kind of cycle that locks you in. Okay, that was very unhealthy. And I actually had to pray about, I mean, in the end, I pray about it and I realized, you know what? I mean, I didn't really pray, but I, I, at the end of it, I mean, I still have some decks here and there. I mean, I'm keeping them not so much because I want to practice the reading, but because I realized, you know, these are just pretty odd. <laughs> They're well drawn and everything. But, uh, but, but why do I invest something like that is like material with and with something so spiritual and so when I can actually find in my own faith as a Christian, uh, it doesn't make sense. Okay, and yeah, I, I don't want to like to go back to what their friend said that even their friend who was very heavily involved in the New Age and astrology and everything, uh, I actually told him recently a few weeks, but I don't I don't think that he gets my point exactly, but. Uh, I said it to him as a as a as a kind of warning actually because, uh, it's, I was concerned because I mean we we have been friends for a long time, and uh, the thing was this I asked him like was anyone actually using any witchcraft on you, uh, that was then he said that he at the point in time when he first told me about the dream he said it could be possible because he had some, uh, colleagues or coworkers or something uh, some people in that industry that he was working in, uh, working with. Who were very narcissistic and who were very uh yeah they were very jealous of his achievements as a person and and he had this feeling that they were probably getting his picture off the internet or and then you know doing some hexing of voodoo uh, and i just told him you know you need to just uh simply uh i asked him i didn't really ask him to tell me much about what to do but because i <laughs> i i i i mean nowadays i'm very very skeptical about the real possibilities of this kind of things and and not just it's not just skepticism but it's just that you know as a as a christian or even as a, even if it's not as a christian but even as a modern man uh, or even as a person of uh, logic why do you give all these things so much power when you have the right to live your life um so uh empowered and 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 yeah and and to give so much power to all these things uh would be very dangerous so recently i just told him again you know i asked him are you okay now have you been experiencing that uh he i mean the, after that you know that that i think it was about the third time or second time that i asked him about sleep paralysis uh i was asking in the context obviously of uh, narcissism and encounters with narcissists uh he said uh no i haven't been have, having that anymore uh because i have had uh I, I have had a, a moment of stress that was what he told me uh, it was really bad and it caused me to develop that sleep paralysis uh, I guess that I can take it at face value that it was indeed linked to stress uh, but uh, to link to that particular thing about the spiritual aspects of uh, sleep paralysis I'm not actually just linking it to um, the new age movement involvement in the occult alone but uh, I just told him you know I told him I told him this uh, maybe you shouldn't actually go to that charismatic church uh, you were attending last time anymore. Um, I, I really meant it because um, based on my experience, I don't think that he was the only one whom I know who have had gone through that. Years ago when I was in this church, okay, it was called the Tabernacle Church. Yeah, I know, what do you call a church after a Jewish Tabernacle? Uh, where, where you know the presence of God comes in it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a charismatic, uh, non-denominational church, but 
um, I had a this the person that girl who brought me to the church. Uh, she was actually uh, uh, telling us about experience where she, you know, had I think it was sleep paralysis. She saw a pretty demonic dark presence, and uh, you know that uh, the counselor in the group, uh, the one who was doing the Bible studies or the prayer session, was asking her, "Have you had?" Um, have you had anyone dedicating you to any 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 foreign spirits other than the Christian God, uh, that led you to uh, be tied to some other spiritual entity that that led you to be oppressed in your sleep? Uh, I didn't. She didn't say so anything about that because it obviously seems that she she either grew up in a Catholic or non Christian family. So, uh, and 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 being like being someone from uh like a catholic common girl school yeah she probably wasn't ex exposed to any kind of like ritual of like you know uh bethroating bethroating or like engaging you to or uh, to be to be so adopted yeah uh to be adopted to by this particular deity in some other religion like some taoist chinese taoist religion or some other pagan religion so uh that was the, the claim but uh no i don't i don't believe that now in retrospect looking back i can only say there are a few things uh, if you actually not you but uh, not just for anyone who is listening but uh, but even for those who have had friends and family or people you know who are experiencing sleep paralysis uh, if if you want to actually come up with the spiritual reason I, I will urge you all to start looking at the person's uh, own uh, spiritual you know behavioral patterns yeah uh, if the person has had some uh, connections with the occult yeah uh, when I say occult, I also mean New Age movement, witchcraft, voodoo, or if not New Age voodoo, uh, okay, then if not, if they also potentially have some connection with uh, the new apostolic uh, reformation, uh, which was like, I mean, the new movement of hyper charismatics, uh, I would urge you to warn that person because. There appears to be a particular spirit that is not from God, and um, there was a common thread that I noticed that in most of these people who are in the hyper charismatic movement, uh, and uh, I think it was actually one of the reasons, other than the uh, my years being in the, I mean, I I converted to become a, I'm converting to become an Eastern Orthodox Christian, uh, for many reasons. It's not just uh, because of like my my inability to accept charismatic Christianity but uh, uh, and on the evangelical side but also my inability to actually accept uh, Calvinist or Presbyterian or you know the reform principles of of, of uh, this movement I mean this evangelical Christianity so um, and uh, after it's, it's, a, it's a very obvious choice for me that I think I cannot I cannot in all conscience stay on but uh, I believe that this um, charismatic uh, movement itself uh, doesn't have the Holy Spirit of God in it, and uh, in instead, I I think it could be potentially uh, another spirit. Okay, uh, I have had like one friend, uh, this friend friend Cheryl, she was trying to be defensive about it last time. She said, "Aren't you committing blasphemy to attribute uh, acts of the Holy Spirit to?" Uh, to, to, to the devil no I said no no that is not the correct definition because to commit blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is to actually attribute the, the, the acts that um, our Lord Jesus Christ did while he was still alive to the devil and that was actually blasphemy against the Spirit and that would not be unforgiven uh, but that is not the same as saying uh, you know like discerning spirits to say that potentially this might not be from God and uh, I think that for those of y'all who might not be aware, you know that the founder of the Bethel movement, B E T H E L, uh, which is a hyper charismatic movement, and of course, which is actually responsible for many uh, contemporary Christian music songs, uh, which is uh, you know the the CCM movement, the contemporary Christian music movement is actually quite big fast, uh, F A R C E. Yeah, it's a big fast. It's a big joke because uh, a lot of it actually creates a lot of uh, really unbiblical songs and uh, songs which teach you really uh, it's an unorthodox yeah unorthodox theology and, and it seems to be such that um, you I, I cannot for all in all honesty endorse anything that that, that is coming about because you know that the, when the founder of that movement Bill Johnson said something once about his experience uh, trying to you know uh, 
come into contact with the Holy Spirit, he likens it to some electric current. This this seems very common in a lot of these uh, people. They actually uh, downplay the person, the, the personality, the, the personality of the personhood of uh, God, the Holy Spirit, by reducing uh, him to a particular force field or energy. Uh, it's quite uh, disturbing because we know that in uh, even in in um, Catholicism or even in in uh, orthodoxy in its different branches, um, the Holy Trinity, including God, the you know the Holy Spirit, is often often depicted in as three persons, three persons but one common essence, so one being, so um. There's this tendency in charismatic circles, especially hyper charismatic circles, to uh, downplay the uh, or to demonize, yeah, to demonize the personhood of the Holy Spirit, such that the Holy Spirit, He Himself, is being uh, reduced to nothing more than a force that we can command. And you know, Bill Johnson was doing something that I I, I really saw to be very blasphemous because he talked about how. You know when he was conducting the force of Holy Spirit, then he was trying to call down strange fire. He was calling down fire, fire, holy fire, all these people. They started doing stuff like you know, like twitching, convul convulsing, like like yeah, uh, like demon possessed people, and uh, on top of being deep demon possessed, looking like almost like no different from people who are demon possessed. Uh, he confessed something. He said something about how in his sleep something was pressing him down. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Someone who experiences sleep paralysis. If you are actually, if you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, why are you oppressed to that extent? It's not. It doesn't make sense. And 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 I'm not saying that you know like Christians cannot be oppressed by spirits because, uh, yeah. I mean you won't be demon possessed because demon possessed demon possession is actually, you know, a spirit taking over your whole body, making you behave in another way. Um, this happens mostly with uh, non-believers or non-Christians who don't have the Holy Spirit. But um, the the way it was being happening was like okay, the, the real Greek term for demonization uh, is not exactly just referring to demon possession. It could also, it has a very fine shade of meaning. It could also refer to demonic oppression, and so that also accounts for why in the ancient world um, this is something that I studied for my uh, degree. Yeah, according to Peter Brown. Uh, the early history of the Christianity and the renunciation of the body, uh, which is actually one of my favorite books. Actually, uh, there was a long history of actually uh, casting out demons and 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 the not just the apostles but even the early church fathers, and, and uh, down into let's say even the yeah the anti Nicene Nicene uh, fathers in the fourth and uh, century and beyond. Uh, there there is still that ongoing. Uh, trend or tendency to cast out demons and spirits because uh, not because they believe that believers were uh, taken over by demons but because they believe that this some 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 uh, believers were actually oppressed by spirits and demons because uh, maybe in their own state of uh, unconfessed sins um, they were yeah they were oppressed by this they had actually allowed open a doorway for these demons to come in and actually oppress them uh, I actually might have told you all about I, I mean even from my own perspective I haven't really been having any experience with sleep paralysis but from my point of view uh, having had gone through uh, I, I'll just tell you a little bit more about my experience with uh, the, the way you know like the way spiritual realm actually works on me in terms of the uh, um, yeah, some demonic dreams and things like that. Um, I I can't actually explain it using science because I believe that there's some demonic presence, and uh, there were some cases uh, that I think that uh, I have not talked about this before, uh, even including yesterday night. Uh, okay, I actually might have told you there was um, there's a I have this icon of Jesus, the Panto Creator, the, the Creator. Panto Creator is the Creator of all things. Um, this is only one of the icons I have. Uh, but I actually got, I'm getting two other icons. One of the Virgin Mary Theodore Kors Panagia. Uh, basically, 
the one not made from by human hands, um, there, there's a belief that the original was drawn by Luke the Evangelist, although I think it's not really <laughs> scientifically or historically proven, it's just a particular tradition, but uh, there was the um, also the other icon, the Greek icon of uh, Jesus the Good Shepherd that I actually I'm getting and I'm waiting for to re arrive in my home so that I can just place it there. Uh, I'm I'm not investing there with so much so called power per se as much as I believe that, you know, having all this reminds me of my own faith and the fact that, you know, I'm I have God with me. Yeah, I have God with me. So um, I really believe that it's necessary to keep on praying if you have all these dreams because uh there were some strange moments when I mean sometimes you get that when you are stressed, sometimes you get that also when you're struggling, but uh, the one particular thing that I used to have as a dream was this whole thing about one particular, uh, you know, former friend who claims she 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 claims to be Roman Catholic, but uh, she claims at the same time that she could hover someone, she can basically stalk someone or tap into their consciousness, while uh, without their permission. Yeah, and I was like, wow, you're Roman Catholic and you are Christian, allergic Christian, but you're doing all these things. Why are you doing that? And uh, it's, isn't it like kind of form of witchcraft? And 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 she came on trying to use that. Obviously, she's using that to control people. Uh, and I remember that when uh, that was like after I cut, I had cut her off in twenty seventeen because I thought she was crazy. She has a possibly borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder. She actually, I saw a disembodied head that was actually floating around her disembodied head, and then the hair was attached uh, at the you know the point of the neck where it was being severed to a snake like body I call out the name of Jesus I remember I screamed out really loud in the name of Jesus be gone and after that and the moment I woke up I saw that what looks like head is like it just retreated and it seems actually it, was not, it wasn't even her head it was actually something like a plastic bag or something that they had uh, you know in, in that kind of state of like you know I am whatever it seemed like it was the her head um it's strange, it's like years, like four or five years after I stopped talking to her, I could actually just see her doing all these things in my dream. Uh, and uh, you know the terrorist dream that I had before, I, which I was telling you all about, uh, which was linked to a former narcissist and the way that a former narcissist was trying to terrorize and uh, destroy my spirit and break my spirit. Uh, you know that actually I, I would say that you need a lot of deliverance for that. And um, I have had people praying for me and I also went for therapy because I know that it was after the death of my the passing of my grandmother. Uh, I, I find it's just weird. I just told my friend, it's not just a stress. It's almost feels as if someone who was like a, a great person, the way that she can, you know, she can block all this. I mean, there's this belief that at least in my culture that they say that, oh, you know, like holy people or good people can actually block their... <laughs> The, the 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 presence of all these evil demons and whatever I don't know whether it's true but I know that there was some very obvious higher power protecting me and I know that God was protecting me over the years from 27 2018 yeah 2018 until now until last year but uh, after she passed everything was just like came like tumbling down so uh, Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna like just go around in circles. I, I mean, I'll probably make another video about this. But uh, what I just want to say was, uh, you know, one thing: avoid the New Age movement, avoid your cult. Okay, and then uh, also avoid the hyper charismatic movement because all these things, the, the the you know the spiritual forces in it, they are opening a doorway or the pathway to uh, things like sleep paralysis and uh, even possibly demonic dreams. And uh, I don't want anyone to actually go through that. Uh, I mean, I haven't been in, involved in all this, uh, you know, like hyper charismatic movement or the new age for years. But uh, even then, I can feel sometimes, you know, like because of my experience with being abused by a narcissist who possibly was using some kind of witchcraft or whatever, who was also possibly demonized due to yoga. Yeah, um, the the realization was that I wasn't exactly very safe. I don't really feel very safe and. Uh, like two days ago, I think on Wednesday, uh, actually not two days ago, yesterday uh, during Wednesday mo uh, morning when I went for the EMDR session, the psychologist was actually talking to me about some of these things and uh, uh, she doesn't want to give, a, obviously psychologists don't give a spiritual reason but she said, uh, she's just trying to tell me at the end of the session, during the session, you are safe right now. So uh, I want everyone to actually come up to that, you know, the realization, the realization you are safe, okay? 
you are people like those abusers and whatever in the past they cannot come to you okay so um that's it for now anyway uh, i'll just uh, try to do some more research and talk a little bit more about this later on okay in the meantime uh, have a good night everyone okay okay bye bye